welcome to Vlogmas day two. Today I'm just getting ready to go and do some Christmas shopping but once I get back I am going to show you guys how I take all of my pictures and obviously my Christmas pictures this time of year so you have that to look forward to but right now I'm going to go and do a bit of Christmas shopping. You know when you wake up and you've not spoken to anyone yet and your voice is like 10 times deeper than it usually is that's what's happening to me now so I apologise. So something that has been highly requested by you guys is to show you how I take my pictures and there's no better time to do this than Christmas time because I'm always inspired to take pictures this time of year. The rest of the year not so much so I've got a few props out. I don't think I'm actually going to take an actual picture to put on my Instagram but I'm just going to show you guys how I do it. So if you've been living under a rock my mice and my rats have their own separate Instagram this is what it looks like, it's just Boggle Buddies on Instagram and this is where all of my like nice pictures of them go instead of like spamming my other account that's where all of their individual pictures go over on there. So I don't know how well you can see this but this is the background I use usually I'll have it kind of draped like this and stuck on here with magnets but we do have like a snow blanket to take pictures so I've just put it on the back of my desk for now and this is a white PVC background, I think I got this from eBay and honestly, I don't 100% recommend it. It is a bit of a pain in the butt because when I first got this, it would not unravel from being rolled up. I did have to press it down flat and keep it flat for like a month to actually use it. So it's a bit annoying, but it is flat now, which is good. So this is what I'll use to take the majority of my pictures. I will just use this as the background, but today we've got it up there. So that's that. I will leave it linked in the description if you're brave enough to try and put up with having to unroll it. So that's basically my setup. I'll have the background and then whatever I want to take a picture of them with. So just some props here and then I'll have my camera set up on a tripod in front of that. And then if you're wondering why it's so bright, that's because I use these softbox lights. These are just from Amazon. I'll leave them linked in the description. I do actually have two of these, which would probably be better in terms of lighting, but this room is just too small to set both of them up. So I'll usually have this one pointed at my photography setup. So obviously I am holding my camera right now, but I will put this on the tripod and then the settings I use, I am not a photographer at all. A majority of the time I have no idea how to use a camera. Um, I've tried so many different things, but the thing I found to work for me best is to use bright lighting, either natural lighting or with a softbox, and then just use the sports mode setting on my camera. If you're a photographer, you're probably cringing so hard right now, but I find it so hard to get good quality pictures of my animals moving using the manual settings so I just prefer to use a sports mode and if you don't have any clue how to use a camera a bit like me, I obviously know how to use it for filming and stuff but I just find it hard, I just find it easier to use a sports mode so that's what I use on the camera. So I'm going to pop the camera on the tripod now, I'm not going to be taking pictures because I need to use the camera to film. I probably could film on my phone but I really can't be bothered so I'm just going to put it on the tripod and you're going to see what it would look like from a photography perspective and I'm going to talk you guys through how I actually take pictures of the mice and get them to sit still and things like that. So I do have some pets that just cannot be bribed with the treats and you might find that yours are also similar that when they're put in this kind of setting they're not 
too comfortable and they don't want to eat, which is perfectly fine. I do just take pictures of them moving around. I don't try to offer them a treat or anything because I just know they won't take it. But some of my mice, they will take a treat straight away, which is good. That kind of means they are comfortable with being in the setting. And a good thing to do is get your pets used to being on wherever you're gonna take their pictures. So get them used to being on your desk. My mice are fairly used to being on here anyway. So that just help in the photography process is getting them used to where you want them to be before you try to start taking any pictures. My rats are a little bit harder, they are a bit more free-willed. If they don't want their picture taken, they just won't sit still and have it taken. So I do choose wisely which one I'm gonna take a picture of. If they're not feeling up to it, then I just won't force them and they won't take pictures. And that is also a really important thing to remember is nothing is worth stressing your pets out for. It's not worth trying to get a picture if they are visibly very stressed and they're trying to run away and escape. Just give up, don't take the picture, it's not worth it and try again another day. So I've got two treats here that tend to work with my mice. They don't really care about too many other things. First one is a tiny piece of chocolate drop. I will break this up into really, really small pieces just to make sure they're not getting too much. And then the second one is a dried mealworm. These are the only real things that work with them to get them to sit still. My rats, they have different treats they prefer. Chocolate drops always work well. You just want to make sure you're not giving them too much, but your pet will probably have a different favorite treat. If you know what that is, I would recommend using that for your photo shoots because they are more enticed to sit still. So what I usually do is I place them down where I want them to be, whether it's sat amongst the trees, for example, or sat in the actual car itself. And then as soon as their feet are touching wherever I want them to sit on, I then put a treat right in front of their face. Most of my mice will take this and start eating as if they don't really care where they are. And that means they are sat in the prop that I want them to sit in. Now when it comes to taking my pictures, I will just sit there and wait for them to kind of finish their treat. When they get towards the end of finishing it, this is when I start to hold down the button and literally just fire away and take all the pictures on sports mode. And then after that, I'll go through like hundreds of pictures and try to find one that's actually decent. So that's the method I use. I know it's probably not the best one out there, but that's how I take my pictures and I'm just being honest. The best photos I found I've got are ones that are quite comical. I'll try to insert some examples on screen, but these are ones of my mice chewing and they end up with their mouth open, which is hilarious, but people have asked me how I've got that picture in the past. I've just quickly took a picture of them whilst they're chewing and that's the end result. I tend to find when they are eating the treats, they're looking down, so it's not the cutest picture ever, but if that's the only picture you can get, that is also fine. But that's why I try to wait until the last second where they're just finishing the treat and they start to look up. And that's where most of my decent pictures come from. They're looking like they are interested in being where they are, when in reality, they probably just want to have their next treat. Sprig. Good girl. What's this? So yeah, it's just about being calm and patient and obviously not forcing them into any situations they don't want to be in. As you can see, she's perfectly happy to just sit here. Some of my mice probably would not sit here for as long as she is, but <laughs> as you can see, she's perfectly happy and can easily be bribed by a treat. So yeah, I think that's everything. I can't think of anything else to suggest. That's just my method of doing things and it works really well for me. I don't think they'd get too stressed out. Being here because they are used to being on my desk. Do not go through that. They are used to being on my desk and they get plenty of treats out of it. So I really don't think they mind having their picture taken. And it is so important to make sure you're not forcing them into any situation they don't want to be in. And don't wake them up as well. Don't wake them up to take a picture because they're not gonna be happy from the get go. I would recommend just seeing whichever of your mice or your rats are awake. I know it's really hard this time of year with the daylight and stuff, but that's why I use my soft boxes to wait until my mice and my rats are awake before I take any pictures. Wanna go home? Yeah. Come on then, good girl. So as important as taking the actual picture is, I do tend to edit them as well. Afterwards, this does make a massive difference because even though I do use these nice lights, sometimes they still end up quite dark just because of how my room is. So I tend to edit them on Instagram as well. This is what the picture looks like straight from the camera. And then this is what the picture looks like after I've edited it. So just to show you how I do this quickly, I will upload the picture into Instagram and then resize it to whatever size I want it to be and then go on to all of the editing sections. So there's only really three things I tend to do with my pictures. The first one is brightening them. I do make sure my brightness is turned all the way up 
on my phone just to make sure this is as accurate as it's going to look to everyone else that is viewing the pictures but if I do that right now you're not going to be able to see so let's just pretend I've done that but I also do brighten this in the app and make sure it's nice and bright and then sometimes I will mess around with the contrast depending on how the picture looks after I've done that but usually I don't bother with the contrast too much. As well as this I will also turn up the saturation, you don't want to do this too much because if you oversaturate the picture it's going to end up looking weird but I do it a tiny bit just to make sure those colours stand out. And then the only other thing I tend to do with my pictures on Instagram is I will sharpen them. This just makes the key details like the whiskers and stuff stand out even more and that's the only real things I do to my pictures on Instagram. I did used to use an external app, I used to use the VSCO camera app, but I did find that after I was using this to edit my pictures and then uploading it onto Instagram, the quality of my pictures, it will just kill the quality for some reason, so I don't tend to use external apps anymore, I tend to just edit within Instagram itself. So yeah, that is how I edit my pictures after I've taken them, I do think it is a really important step to make sure they look how you want them to, and a lot of the things I do with my pictures editing them makes the world a difference so I definitely recommend playing around with the settings on Instagram before you upload your pictures. So it is a lot later now, I am so tired and I'm in my dressing gown once again, I think this might just become a thing because I'm tired all the time but I know I need to end this vlog so I'm going to answer some of your questions quickly. So the first question is, would you ever own a Duplicy gerbil aka fat tail gerbil? Now I follow some people on Instagram that have these as pets and I know this is really bad for me to say considering I have rats, but I don't really know how I feel about their tails. I do find them cute, but I don't know if I would want to own one myself because their tails just remind me of something else, which will definitely get me demonetized. so I'm not too sure on that one. The next question is, have you ever been to a Disney park during Christmas? No, I've not. I've been to Disneyland in Florida five times, but just during like the normal time of the year. I would really really love to go at Halloween time and then also at Christmas time as well but I've just never been at that time of year. I tend to go during the summer holidays so I would really really love to go at Christmas and Halloween. The next question is what is your favourite breed of dog? My favourite breed of dog just based on appearances, hey buddy, is a Nova Scotia duck trolling retriever but if we're taking into account the appearance and also the temperament of the dog then by far my favourite breed is a golden retriever. Hey baby. You're my favourite breed of dog. You are. You're my favourite breed of puppy. Where are you going? Do you like my dressing gown? We dress the same. So the last question I'm going to answer today is, would you want to own four mice or four dogs? And I think considering I already own way over four mice, I would definitely say four mice over four dogs. The most amount of dogs I've ever had at one time is two and I don't know if I could ever go above that because I only have two hands and unless they were really really well behaved I don't think I could cope having four dogs at a time so I don't think I could ever go above having two dogs so I definitely would have to pick four mice instead. So yeah that is it for today's video, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you're still really excited for the rest of Vlogmas. Please make sure to subscribe to see all the rest of my videos and we'll see you in my next video. Bye! Goodbye, Sprout.